Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce growth show in the UK. Uh, my name is Phil Kay. You, you'll know me from Segmentify. Uh, I'm talking to a great guy today called Chris Navroski. Now, Chris is a bit of a veteran, a bit of an e-commerce veteran, uh, been in pure play for a, a long, long time, over 12 years actually on the client side. And uh, then he went on to found his own agency called uh, Here, as in short for Heuristics. And he's been running that for the last three years. So he specializes in, in something that he calls holistic e-commerce, which we'll dig into a little bit more. Um, but um, let me welcome Chris first. Chris, how are you doing? I'm very well. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. It's been it's been lovely to get to know you over the last few weeks. Um, how's how's uh, you know how's life? How's the weather up where you are at the moment in 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 London? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with life. Life's good. Life's good. You know, it's um, <laughs> good. I, 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 yeah. I, I think you know, it's um, everyone's gone through the cycles of lockdown, yeah. where you have you know those several ups and downs throughout it, and then now it's very much looking at what's the rest of this year holds and you know even more so what q1 q2 next year looks like yeah. but all in all i cannot complain um the weather the weather is phenomenal i'm looking outside <laughs> the weather you know it's, it's not raining which is good but that's it that's, yeah. the, that's a bonus for our country isn't it? exactly <laughs> yeah yeah anyway so why don't we start with a bit of an icebreaker um so you are investing and in starting in your own d2c business is that right it is it is it is yeah so um it's something that we my, myself and my business partner who's also called chris so you know it's not nice and confusing but chris equally if you, just, if you shout chris in our direction one of us will answer <laughs> um so we, we we have sort of three or four dc businesses we're working on which are owned awesome. by us uh which we're looking to deploy sort of q4 this year awesome. um a variety of sort of uh predominantly heavy retail businesses which are all d2c leveraging a lot of the the, the, the knowledge and the uh, strategies yeah. that we deploy for other sort of uh, smes yeah again you know it's it's a lot of it's proof 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 of uh proof concepts proving okay. that what we say will happen will happen and does happen yeah. and do it for ourselves and also you know it's good to constantly get learnings um i'm, I'm always working super hands-on in yeah. ppc paid social programmatic yeah. Yeah. you know seo uh trading yeah. and so on and so forth but to do it for myself yeah. to see that firsthand absolutely can well, you give us a snippet of like what some of the things you, you, you're doing or testing or is it a bit under the wraps at the moment it's a little bit under the wraps at the moment but as soon as soon i mean you'll you'll, you'll know once it's there <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully yeah. um yeah. But, but again you know it's we're, we're launching businesses that aren't trying to take over their, their 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 categories you know yeah. just trying to be sort of one percent of that category to share yeah. some market share and get get some good learnings from it definitely um we, we've all invested in, sorry mate carry on no no i was gonna say we just i mean invested in some uh in some dcs as well who are sort of mm. you know and entry level who need that next that next sort of boost so we give sweat equity as well as actual cash equity which allows yeah. them to do marketing then we activate the marketing as well as be part of their centralized uh directors team yeah that sounds really exciting um yeah that that's fantastic i mean how um how do you go about like strategizing around around this kind of thing i mean it makes sense to me that if you're if you you see an established market and then you work a way to take a, a small part of a big market is that is that basically what the thinking is yeah yeah so we, we work we work on the premise this is very similar to a lot of um a lot of the strategy that uh, Amazon sellers have. So right. they look at the market, they look at the size of the market, the actual ability to get cut through into that market, then what percentage of that market would make it worthwhile for them. So it's, it's a lot of it's looking at sort of your, your you know, Pareto principle of understanding, yeah. you know, what effort you're putting into what you're getting out. So it's yeah. similar for us. So we look, we look, we look at categories like that. Um, and it's not necessarily about, you know, wanting to own that category but trying yeah. to play a part in it. Um, you know, yeah. it's also about looking at sort of the digital IQ of the market and yeah. where we can actually deploy super high digital IQ and get cut through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really interesting, really interesting. Um, so let's talk about like the, ma the main topic today. We, we mentioned it at the beginning, this this idea of holistic e-commerce growth. 
Um, don't worry about that. Um, um, tell, tell us more about what that actually means and how your consultancy is positioned around that. Yeah, so I think tra traditional consultancies and agencies tend to sell in um, direct product sets that they have. So, you know, we, we're a, you know, you're either a PPC agency or a paid social agency or an SEO agency, and there'll be some overlap in between them and, yeah. you know, some, some cross borders. And I think, right. you know, where, where, where we're positioning ourselves is actually being able to say, okay, well, it's not just going to be PPC that drives you forward. It's not just going to be no. paid social. There aren't, yeah. there aren't necessarily a silver bullet that will serve all brands yeah. at all times. So right. the, the standpoint we work from is essentially a super business-centric e-commerce strategy where we actually define what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it. So, right. so for example, you know, it, it, the, the, this business approach is saying, okay, we want to hit this gross revenue. It's like, okay, great. Yeah. And then drill in, then as you drill into it, it's actually, well, we need this subscriber base because yeah. their, their subscription case, subscription uh, business that needs to grow yeah. its subscription yeah. base and their yeah. actual target is subscribers. So then it's working backwards from the subscriber base um, okay. or equally, you know, join a business when we get asked to do paid social. And what we actually end up doing in three, three or four months is actually building out a p &L, a cash flow uh, and, a, and a buying strategy, which enables them to get the bottom line growth that they're looking for. So, you know, it, 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 there, there isn't a linear solution of turning on a channel to get this maximized growth. It's yeah. about being able to advise business-centric strategies that yeah. that involve e-commerce marketing and operations. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, obviously you're talking about growth there. Is it, how does, the, how does it look these days in this kind of world that you're operating in? Is it, is it growth no matter what, you know, is it growth with profit? Is it none of the above? How do you see it at the moment in terms of the, um, you know, the the, 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 the the increasing difficulty of kind of breaking into markets, the increased competition, um, CPAs and so on? How does that, how do you do that? Can, can you do both? Can you grow profit and growth at the same time? So, I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a great question. I think, you know, C CPAs have been coming more and more constrained as we go forward. Uh, the way that the way that I look at it and try and explain is, say, you know, if you look back 10 years yeah. ago, PPC yeah. was the aspirational channel to get into. Then yeah. if you look back seven years ago, paid social was the aspirational channel to get into. Now all those channels, they're just 101. It's part of your playbook. It's just what we do. You know, small brands have PPC. Small brands have paid social. It's no longer this thing that they're reaching for. It's a thing that everyone does. Yeah. So the silver bullets mm. are no longer there. There were there were many brands that turned into multi million pound brands off the back of paid social. Yeah, when it first came to market, but now yeah, yeah, yeah. the market is so saturated, it's, in, it's yeah. very hard to get the same sort of CPA that mm. you used to. Yeah, um, and I think you know is 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 that sort of growth pros, pro, 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 like possible? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think it's just mm. category specific, product specific really doing your homework behind what you're selling before you start selling it so yeah. you know the way they look at it you can do you can do a top you can do a top down or bottom up view on it so bottom up is we have this product we want to try and sell it to the market we'll find out what that market is yeah. or if find out what the market is then build a product to fit into that market and i think that's where a lot of businesses can go wrong because it's so easy to get a product to market mm -hmm. they don't think yeah. about what the rest of that narrative looks like yeah um and you know this this is where holistic e-commerce really kind of comes into play because it's the way the way that i look at it is you know there's a there's a table full of cups each cup is a channel as you pour water into each channel each one will overflow at different points mm -hmm. and it's knowing when the overflow happens and move to the next move to the next mm -hmm. you know you, you're not you're not just going to build a business on paid social you're not just going to build a business on ppc you know mm -hmm. you need to be able to understand and validate what other channels do and how you actually move up that funnel to you know when, when things are overflowing um yeah. it's it, it is it is more challenging the digital yeah. iq of the, of the market in general has you know in, increased dramatically but i mean particularly yeah. in the uk we, we are you know four four or five years ahead of the rest of the rest of the world arguably so a lot of what we're doing is setting benchmarks for the rest of the world mm. no totally yeah it's as you say it's got harder and how do you know, obviously not your world, how how do you know when things are overflowing? 
moving from one channel to the next how, how do you do that so a lot of that comes down to setting your your targets your your qualifiers of success which is arguably the first thing that you yeah. would do before any project is looking at it. so okay in six months time in three months time in a month's time yeah. what one thing are we going to look at and say we were successful because this thing happened mm -hmm. um and arguably you know if you're talking about profitability perhaps that is one of the, the flags that you have you know maybe it's impression share maybe it's, so you set your qualifiers so right. if your qualifier is a cpa then okay. it's looking at your channel mix yeah and how that cpa blended across all channels hits your right. goal to the most profitable uh, kind of level so you know obviously if you had say you had ten thousand pounds spend in a month put yeah. that on social you can yeah. spend and spend and spend then you hit that bell curve of performance where you fall off the other side right and the only way of really knowing that is understanding size of market competition seasonality offer product and all these things make it sort of a rich tapestry per channel yeah. um so arguably you know if if you're operating in ppc and there's no one else in your space doing it then you you run away with it but if there's no one else in that space there's probably going to be less search if there's less search there's less headroom for you to grow into if there was more search volume then there's more headroom but there's, there's going to be more competition so it's understanding the bottlenecks and yeah. you know preempting them and that's essentially you know what building out a, a multi-channel marketing forecast allows you to do is yeah. going in with these assumptions saying well actually you know paid social is only going to be four percent of our online business and that's okay because we've planned other areas to grow into. So, okay, well, organic, that's going to grow yeah. with our outreach. Fantastic. And organic, that doesn't cost us anything. Pay social yeah. costs us, you know, you, you might break even, but that's okay because yeah. blended is a very healthy uh, channel mix. And I think that that's where this sort of really sort of holistic methodology comes into play is understanding the push and pull and the positive tension between each channel. Yeah. No, totally. Is it um, when, when you say holistic in, in your sense, you know, with, with, with here? um is it um is it all about acquisition or are there any other areas that you concentrate on as well though so no in, in short it's not i think acquisition has been very much um the sign of the times Every, you know everything every, everyone's pushing up post pandemic everyone's pushing into programmatic everyone's because during during the during the pandemic the yeah. online presence of consumers doubled tripled quadrupled in some cases and with that open up the market and with that uh, uh, you know enabled more programmatic you know there is going to be a legacy of that where the market's still still a bit swollen but it will slowly decline to a run rate um so acquisition is, is a sign of the times um but again without retention there is no acquisition acquisition is your, sh your, sh your short-term play. Yeah. Your long-term play is your retention strategy. And again, this this goes back to setting those targets and KPIs. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with sort of uh, a Silicon Valley methodology, which is the Silicon Valley of death, which is effectively right. spending into a massive deficit of acquisition, yeah. knowing that you'll soon have that uptick of yeah. retained clients. Right. So you can almost say we can spend into a massive hole because we know that they're going to return in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Then our point of inflection on your break-even point is going yeah. to be in three months, and at that point, yeah. you're going to start swelling. And that, that's essentially what this sort of yeah. VC methodology is: is oh, cash yeah. to market to grow to yeah. then retain yeah, to yeah. give you a Kickstarter. Yeah, sure. Does that? I mean, it's probably a silly question, but I mean, obviously, there's a risk associated with that, right? As well. I mean, does it always go like that, or you know, does it backfire and it doesn't? happen and you so, do. I mean first of all there are no silly questions <laughs> um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's it, you know it's about assessing risk in my mind it's not a risk if you've assessed it because if it is still a, too much of a risk you won't do it so you know it's understanding that there are variables and you've got to give your best guess at what that is and yeah, yeah. you know it, it's You've got you've got to model these things out and really understand what it could look like. Yeah, and then you've got to put your best guess at it and run with it. You know, there, yeah. you know there are market conditions which you can't yeah. you can't yeah. you can't account for. You know, COVID, mm. massive, oh, yeah. massive, massive, massive change in market, massive downturn, massive uptake, massive downturn. Mm. Um, then going back to going back to work. You know, yeah. will even, even go back to work? <laughs> you know, in a traditional sense, and yeah. what will that do? Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. No, 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 totally. It's it's all very uh, interesting to see where this is all going. I mean, if you were to boil 
growth down to like one important most important thing if you like what would you what would you say that was oh one thing um the most important thing that you have to consider if you like yeah yeah and i think i think it's essentially what we've just covered there it's understanding what the full customer life cycle looks like you know if you are if you are acquiring what happens then where is the handoff point and then what goes on from there so effectively if you know you're going to acquire uh you know if, you, if you're not first purchase uh yeah. positive in terms of revenue yeah, yeah. then you have, you have to know what is going to sequentially happen and i know there are there are there are some categories where you won't be first purchase positive and you've got to understand that there's going to be sequentials so i think understanding customer and market yeah. is yeah. you know is paramount with yeah. with any sort of new business going to market understanding where they dwell what their spending habits are what their bottlenecks are what you know what you know if you build the best product in the world and take it to market but if it's yeah. twice the price of your nearest competitor they're not going to look at how great it is they're going to look at your competitor and say well actually that's just cheaper you know there's less friction there for them so they'll go there you'll yeah. get some catchment but it yeah. won't be you won't be able to scale at the same rate no no totally no it makes sense you know um go go i mean going back to the kind of the routes to market elements that you're talking about um is it is it possible to kind of you know grow like this where you're effectively distributing as opposed to kind of manufacturing like so from i'm, so I'm thinking about margins and profit and stuff and talking about growth and profit is there is there a marked difference and is it is it almost foolish these days to just be distributing and do you have to go down the manufacture route to try and protect your profits and growth and stuff what does that all look like these days yeah that, that almost feels like a perfect segue into you know what 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 primark the primark conundrum of should they sell online should they not sell online um and i think you know it's again the, 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 you'll hear me say it a lot but it's positive tension and it has to be a positive tension between the two so at the start of the pandemic yeah. we helped a lot of um sort of enterprise uh b2b's move to d2c yeah and half of that was because you know there's an opportunity here that we can sell into that market great you know so opportunistically there is that move from b2b to d2c there's all, also a large transitional shift where larger high street manufacturers such as you know um perhaps halfords or b and q they yeah. used to they used to buy in a lot of stock but during the pandemic because they were closed they actually pulled manufacturing in-house so a lot of those b2b's weren't yeah. getting the same sales to them so they had to move to d2c and start growing that and i think a lot yeah. of this comes back to is, is, is future proofing yeah. how do you future proof yourself future proof your cash flow and understand consumer habits yeah. consumers are looking a lot more they are you know that it's not just google purchase it's look on the mobile look on the ipad look on the desktop come back in a week look again and within that where do you sit in that mix they won't necessarily have brand loyalties to half as to whatever and the opportunities are within your broad channel mix is to get those touch points in and pull them into d2c so you know there's much more value in owning your customer mm. and i think that's that's what the real the real the real thing here is being able to own that customer mm. and create that long journey and build those brand narratives with yeah. them directly as opposed to through a third party yeah sure sure question on that then um i mean i've asked this a few times before what's your opinion on it so when when a brand goes d2c that's that's historically been um you know b2b effectively um where like i don't know going right back to the days of apple mm -hmm. um the idea of having a massive distribution network but also going direct and you know i went i mean it was like a long time ago right when they when they almost when they started doing it and you could tell there was this massive kind of uprising of all the resellers and stuff going like what's going on they're going direct how does that look these days in terms of anything around um you know dilution of market available to the distributors versus the d2c and stuff is there any like have you got any views or any you know info on that so again you know this 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 takes me back to being sort of client side in businesses that were sort of 90 95 percent wholesale yeah um which the the argument would always be e-commerce can't grow because you're going to take wholesale's market share and you're going to you're going to stop our uh, customers from buying from our retailers that we sell to and that's just going to make more tension between us when yeah. things don't sell the sell through is drop and yeah. know, so on and so forth and yeah. when in reality that doesn't doesn't necessarily happen 
No. Consumers shop differently. Yeah. And the person that buys in a small independent menswear shop isn't going to be the same guy that's going to be Googling trying to find the best offer online. Yeah. And you know, this 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 is a very similar similar question to you know where when 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 do you use affiliates? And again, if affiliates for you is a discounted channel, that's fine. It's a different segmented audience. There'll be a small overlap, but not great. So I think that the, the real the real challenge is, you know, it's not a one size fits all. It doesn't no. it, that that isn't true for every every sort of vertical, every single sort of business. But no. arguably, as as a, as a as a broad brush, I'd say yeah. the market is big enough yes. to not have those overlaps and but, not to write it off. You know, it, it's 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 the same reason for wanting to grow your B two B as well as your D two C. It's understanding that there are going to be overlaps, but it's positive. And it's there are other the verticals there. So, for example, you know, if you're selling, if you're selling bedding, the person who's going to look for you through Google is super high intent. They're just going to they want some bedding because they need it. Yeah. But equally, B two B, you could sell bedding to hotels, and they're never going to be the same customer, and there's never going to be that overlap. So it's it's a hundred percent about understanding your market and market share. And I think the the only times you really come unstuck is if you're super wholesale heavy or super e-coms heavy, and you're not willing to take that uh, positive tension and push mm. those sales around the business. There are opportunities across the board. It's just understanding that there are limits to each. If yeah. you go full wholesale, that will swell the market. And more, you know, more, more likely than not, mm. it'll negative impact your wholesale accounts. If you have multiple wholesalers who are all into, you know, if you wholesale to multiple enterprise businesses, they're going to be fighting against each other as well as fighting against you. So yeah. it's yeah. understanding what will happen when that happens yes yeah but it sounds to me like i mean it's been happening for a long time now and it's kind of increasing so it, it clearly can sit together and and work um, yeah yeah I, I think that there's going to be a large resurgence of b2b i think wholesale yeah. is going to it's going to boom over q3 q4 this year mm. it'll be interesting to see what uh, the, the the year ends look like next year yeah um but the, you know everyone's planning for that boom yeah no totally totally I was surprised actually you know um there was quite there was quite a big rebound in april yeah wise but actually may's may's print has come down like already i was really surprised it would only take almost a month i wonder if it'll you know resurge again at some point or, or what i i think you know that there's there's a lot of social socioeconomics at play here where yeah. you know i think it's just uncertainty yeah. uncertainty in the market uncertainty and cash flow uncertainty and work uncertainty and covid you know all these things play a part in mm -hmm. a consumer psyche and actually yeah. you know it's, it's not as not as simple as okay i want to get back to the shops and i'll go out um yeah. but yeah. equally you know we, we we it's too early to comment on what con what mm -hmm. shopping habits are like I and mean, i'm speaking personally yeah. through all of lockdown i've not bought any clothing i've just 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 kept what i had and i even now i don't feel the need to buy anything yeah. No, no, I haven't either. Actually, I uh, just you know because I haven't been out as much at all. I've been buying things like chlorine tablets and uh, <laughs> <laughs> garden furniture, like everybody else, probably. Well, no. well, well, this is it. You know, there's going to be that there's going to be that small transitional shift in sort of mental well-being, being at home, your home yeah. space, and you know, it, I mean, it, it, even when I'm going out again now, I don't feel the need to buy more of anything that I need to go out. You know, it's very much about yeah what, what what things do i need to actually exist and but that, you know that that's yeah. that's where my head's at and that's probably where it's going to be and that's that's a massive change for me post pandemic yeah no totally so um i expect you'll be wearing the same clothes you're wearing now to the curry night in a, in a couple yeah. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome um one thing i did want to ask you because you mentioned silver bullets earlier in the sense that there there aren't any like you know from the old the old cohort of things that uh you know, um, were very, very successful when they first began. Have you detected, though, any new silver bullets or any forecasted silver bullets on the horizon at all? Or is that is that strictly under the uh, radar of the Hure consultancy? So I, I think, you know, that there are there are some plays that we do deploy, which there are short term wins, long term wins. Yeah. Um, but, it, it, you know, in, in terms of the channel channels, you know, I think everyone has been watching TikTok. The difficulty is is understanding what that audience is. Yeah. And I think it's as 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 with most things, mm. the early adopters are going to be the brands that have a lot of 
cash kicking around, allowing them to put time and effort into it to grow yeah. an audience for tomorrow. Yeah. And that, you know, that's always the challenge. I think the, 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 the real, the real thing here is understanding the slow decline of Facebook within, you know, within the UK, Facebook's declining, yeah. Instagram's, you know, still increasing, but then the, the way that that media is digested in the U S is completely different and it's still yeah. very much a core channel. So, you know, yeah. you know, when we're talking about no silver bullets, it's all geo geographically kind of has to be appropriate yeah, in that yeah. sense. But I think, yeah. you know, you know, as I'm sure many people did, they, I, I downloaded TikTok and I've, I fall into the trap of just digesting media through TikTok, all yeah. nonsensical short media, which doesn't, you know, doesn't give a, me a lasting, uh, a is lasting it, impression or anything. Is it entertainment? Is it, is it, it is. entertainment basically? It is. It is. It, it's, uh, you know, I suppose it's very, it fulfills that, 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 that Americana of just constantly blasting you with lots and lots of media, lots of different things and lots of yeah. subverted yeah. things, which, you know, it's, it's such an un unknown quantity. I think the big, the big, the big things there is if you are successful, you can hit a lot of people and become viral. You know, there's been yeah. some musicians who have been very successful off the back of it, where they've had, right. you know, dare I say, it, TikTok dances that have made them go viral, which yeah. were global, and yeah. that made them, you yeah. know, a yeah. lot of money very quickly. Yeah, and yeah. that was that was the only strategy we should deploy. And I think again, that that's. That's the thing about having, you know, saying there's no silver bullets. It's very much about understanding the market and what you can do as a brand. Yeah, no, totally. TikTok isn't going to be for everybody. No, no. Can you, can you, um, I, because I, I don't know TikTok really. I mean, obviously, I've, I've, I've heard what, what you know, you, you're talking about and a lot of other people have said, but can, can you use, can, can, a, can a brand use TikTok like they can use Facebook or, um, you know, Instagram at the moment already? Like, they they can they can and arguably yeah. you could probably use it to you know it, it's different it is different it is yeah. different so if you if you're looking for high impression share high yeah. awareness yeah yeah it talks a fantastic right. fantastic tool yeah. to you yeah. yeah um yeah the customer base you know it's super super low intense it's people just scrolling through it you know you're, you're playing for that impression share and eyes on yeah. it's not going to be a direct conversion tool no. i think now that's where a lot of people won't use it because they, they're yeah. looking for direct conversions. And I think that's yeah. where yeah. The, the Facebook and Instagram ecosystem is changing, where it's less and less about direct conversions and more about a broader play. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, totally. So, I, again, I think it's just understanding where it fits and if it does fit and at what economy of scale for you as a business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, um, like, how, how, how much things have changed, you know, in terms of um, how many people in the uk of certain or globally even if certain demographics you know um are spending a lot of time still scrolling through feeds of facebook or instagram or whatever uh, and then obviously you know the younger generations are they you know scrolling through tiktok all day still more i you know i don't i don't know what those trends look like and how that they, you know. yeah yeah so i mean on that point so my, my other half's a teacher and I always try and get a lowdown from her on what 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 the kids in her school are using. Yeah. And Facebook's Facebook's the thing that your that your granddad uses. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, and that that's indicative. You know, that the, the parts of Facebook that are growing are yeah. closed channels, which you know, closed groups. Yeah. And you know, like I I've not posted on my wall in Facebook for no. years, no. and I, I don't plan to. But what I do use on there, there's like good community groups. Yes. I think that's what they can leverage and what they can grow. And you, you'll probably see that big shift. And I think, you know, that's yeah. if you can build a community within Facebook, yeah. you know, you've got a community that you can send media product to for free without yeah. having to actually market to them. That, you know, that, that's a big opportunity there. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, it's, it's, it's attention spans to media. It's not, it's, you know, it, it's shorter and shorter and it will keep going that way. Yeah, no, totally. Is your dog all right, by the way? Oh yeah, he's just uh, he's having a party outside. I don't know if you can hear him. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll finish up because he's quite young and he's, he's. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's, he's fifteen weeks. He's oh, uh, still still yeah. a bit of a troublemaker. Yeah. Oh sure. Well, we won't um, we won't let him get too uh, too upset. Um, listen, I mean, it's been great to talk um, about all this uh, about this stuff, holistic um, growth and so on. Um, if anybody is interested to have a chat to you about what you're doing that you know um talking to here and so on what's the best way for the for the guys to get hold of you 
Um, I mean, th through our website, so here.co.uk, um, or even LinkedIn, yeah. you know, I, I'd, if you add, add me on LinkedIn, um, send me a Brilliant. message, very happy to chat. Very awesome. happy to chat. And, and just so, so your surname, just spell your surname so that guys can pick you up easy on LinkedIn. Yes, that's N-A-W-R-O-C-K-I. Awesome. Nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then final, final thing is, I always love to ask my guests this, put them on the spot a bit. Um, just pull something out of the, you know, of the um, experience of, of Chris Nagroski for the guys to take away a bit of a golden nugget from from your wisdom. Um, so yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I probably already covered this topic in here, but I think it's 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 set, setting goals and understanding yeah. what it is that you're trying to do, like really understanding what it is and drill yeah. drill back. So it's not just about we want to make more money. That's not a goal. That, that that you know that's a byproduct of your goal what is your goal is it to acquire more people to acquire more subscribers to grow your bottom line to make you more profitable to hire more staff or you know really yeah. understand what it is you're trying to do and why yeah. you're doing it once you have that you, you'll know which which direction to run in absolutely and, and i mean the message for, for, for me listening to this is that it's that it's far more it's it, it's very complex you can tell that there's a lot to it and some of the stuff yeah spoken about shows that there is so much to think about not only about before but whilst and and during the future of what we're trying to do as well but as i say thanks so much for the for the chat um, Absolute pleasure. oh no it, it's been great to chat and uh, and guys just uh, just remains for me to say that if you're interested in getting involved in the show or you haven't signed up yet for uh, any of the existing or, or future episodes of the show just head over to segmentify.com forward slash egs uh, and as I say, you know, I'm always available if you want to get in touch. Um, if you want to, you know, us to research any particular topics or get involved, I'm at phil at segmentify.com. But uh, yeah, thank you so much again, Chris, for your time. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. No worries. I'll let you go and get your dog. And thank you so much, everybody. And uh, we'll speak to you again very soon. Take care. God bless.